Well, my name is Gary Shotton. I'm standing here on the Great Wall of China. We've been here for just a couple days. We're going to be here a total of about eight days. And uh, um, I'm honored to be here. We're talking with our uh, Christian business friends that are Chinese, and they're very prosperous and doing well. And uh, we're uh, enjoying this time. And I'm going to talk today about uh, the quest for knowledge. And uh, you're uh, going to be faced with... Uh, in each one of our businesses, uh, things that are just changing so rapidly that unless you're on top of uh, your knowledge uh, studies, and I'm not talking about all textbook, but unless you're on top of really digging in and making a concerted effort to know what your product is, how it works, how the machines work, how, how the recipe works. I mean, this is intended for a broad range of uh, business uh, enterprises. And so uh, all I can do is basically uh, give examples of my life and things that I had faced. And so I'm going to stay pretty close to home and talk first of all about my dad. Uh, my dad was a farmer and rancher, and uh, he wasn't what I would call a book uh, person that uh, and I'm not either, to be honest with you. I'm not. Uh, I don't go and just uh, spend the weekend and try to find a novel and write a, read a book. Uh, just not me. Uh, uh, nothing against that. But basically, Dad was knowledgeable, though he was always seeking out knowledge. Uh, in his case, he had. Uh, he wasn't all. We didn't have the internet then. He didn't have a lot of books. But he was on top of things. He would go visit things. He was. He had friends, and he would. He would look into the new things. I can remember a new breed of cattle that he wanted to experiment and we bought those. Now we were not a cow-calf operation which means we didn't have bulls and mama cows. We bought uh, feeder cattle so the cattle were coming to us uh, about uh, maybe they're just about a year old and they'd come off of their uh, their their uh, their their mother is uh, being weaned off of that about 400 pounds and we would grow them from there and then take them through feedlots and and he knew about stuff. He just was willing to learn. Uh, I came into a situation after I graduated from college uh, that I was in a new location, a new state, and I could not find a job. And so out of necessity, I started a moving and storage company. Well, it was just started out to be just something to fill the gap, just something that would get some bread on the table, some food on the table. Some I wasn't destitute, I wasn't broke, but I knew to make sure I had money coming to me. Well, I don't know anything about moving and storage. I do a little bit because I moved myself from one state to another in this horse trailer, and that's what I used. And so I had to learn how to load things. I had to learn how to, to pack things. I had to, and that's, at this point, I'm starting using the internet a little bit, but I'm mostly learning how things work from experience. Um, I would experiment and try. I, I didn't have any experience in uh, anything but local moving. I just, if you wanted me to move you across the street or across town into an apartment, uh, I knew how to do that. And then I decided, well, why would I not move somebody across state lines? In our case, it requires specifications and certifications. And I would, had to learn about semis, and I had to learn how to, to, to properly uh, transport something with the, the all the regulations. I had to learn about those things. I'm a learner. I'm constantly learning. And then one day, I'll never forget this day, I, out of the blue, I'm answering the phone and, and somebody calls and asks me if I can move this special project to the country of Bangladesh. Are you kidding me? I don't even know where that is. I sort of did. And I uh, then automatically said, you know, yes, I can move you to Bangladesh. I didn't know anything about it, but I knew that I could figure it out. So I learned how to do it. I learned how to move offices and how to just, these are fairly simple business, but I had to learn how to do it because I'm going to teach others. If I don't know how it's done, I, I'm not, no, and I don't know that I know how to teach somebody or how to know if somebody else is doing it right. So I had to learn that. I had to learn about real estate. I, I have some properties, and, and I'm not a big investor in properties, but I have some. So I need to know. I need to know about uh, how investments work. And then in the last 10 years, I, I bought a machine shop. Well, uh, most people are really surprised about this, but at age 55, I did not have to buy a business, but I bought a business. It was two and three quarter million dollars 
total value of the business. I put very little money down, which means I borrowed a lot of money, and I committed to a plan to buy a machine shop when I never ever really worked in or been around a machine shop. I had a huge learning curve. I understand now how all the machines work. I can't operate them. I cannot make a good part, but I know how it works. I know about the enough about the metals, enough about the process, enough about heat treating, and enough about plating, the things that are on the drawings, I have to know how to do it. I know how to sell myself. I know how to sell our company. I'm the salesperson. So basically, it's a lifelong process of gaining knowledge in your own field. Uh, you know, I, I, just, I just don't know if we're working hard enough at that. I don't know if your business is not doing well, if you've really researched. I would suggest somebody looking to start a business to go uh, one city over, uh, 100 miles away, and just spend a whole two or three days looking into uh, equal businesses. Find somebody that would, would share information. Ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. Ask questions to the vendors. Ask questions to, the, to, to your supplier of um, raw materials. You can be constantly learning. If you're not, you're falling behind. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you they're successful to you. I ask you to uh, share these with others on the social media if you would. Uh, find us somebody that would help speak because I don't want to be the only speaker. And we just thank you. And I thank you for the opportunity to do this while I'm standing here on the Great Wall of China. Thank you.